Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to share an unboxing of four translucent colors of the Jinhao 82 fountain pens. These colors have been recently released and I will link the store down below. Honestly, the names of the colors are confusing to me. I don't think Jinhao is even the one naming these colors. Because if they were, then every seller online would have the same names for the colors. But it looks like sellers are just naming the colors however they want. So dark blue in one seller is sapphire blue in another seller. And Caribbean blue in one seller is called a dark blue in a different seller. And there are also three different pink names in one seller alone, but in the pictures they all look like the same pink. It's quite the adventure picking a pen to buy and it's helpful that people post actual photos of the pens. That way we can have a better idea what the colors look like, but it's still an adventure. And by the way, I will be doing another pen D stash soon. Not these Jin Hao 82 pens, but older pens from different brands that I have had a long time and that I have not used in years and they no longer speak to me. So anyway, the four pens came in two of the orange boxes. Each box carried two pens and that's fine. That's fine. I usually just flatten these boxes and then paste them onto the pages of my journal. And these are the four colors that I picked this time. And like I said, these are all translucent colors that were recently released. And because the naming of the colors are not even standard, <laughs> for the purpose of making this video easier for me to narrate and easier for you to follow, I will just call these pens Sapphire, Gray, White, and Seafoam. I ordered them all with a fine nib but they can also come with extra fine nibs and they also come with converters as well. We are of course going to test out these pens but first let me show you the seafoam one because this has a pearlized finish that is not on the other translucent pens. I hope my lighting is showing the finish well. I like the color. It's a soft light green that is more familiar to me as seafoam. But the pearl finish is kind of throwing me off and it's also more transparent than the others. You can also already see the converter inside the pen. To compare, here's the white, which is truly translucent. As you can see, even if it's white, we cannot see the converter through the material of the barrel. And I really like that. This gray one is also more transparent we can also see the converter through the barrel of the gray pen and I am not sure that I like that. Here is the translucent pink and we cannot see the converter through the pen with this one. This is the kind of translucency I prefer. I don't like seeing through a pen when it's only a converter that we can see inside but I'm okay with demonstrator pens or transparent pens when they are piston fillers. Here is the translucent dark blue, quote unquote dark blue, which is also a nice translucent pen and the new sapphire that we just unboxed. Here is the translucent ginger and the translucent yellow. I do have separate unboxing videos for these other pens and I will link them all down below in case you're interested. So with the translucent pens I got previously, the translucency is very nice because they are not transparent. They are just really translucent. And this kind of translucency has always been one of the main reasons that I like the translucent Jinhao 82 fountain pens. However, the seafoam pen is already bordering on transparent. It is not purely transparent, of course, but it is already going there. Of course, this can still be technically classified as translucent because there are many different levels or degrees of translucency. But I just like the previous ones so, so much. So I'm a little sad that they were not able to carry it through to the sea foam and to the gray. I do like the color of the gray, but the translucency is throwing off my appreciation of the color. 
And as for the sea foam, the translucency and the pearl finish are throwing off my appreciation for the color of the pen. Anyway, moving on, the translucent pens all come with converters, like I said, but the converters have a transparent knob. The opaque pens also come with converters, but the knobs are black. The opaque pens are older, though. They have been available for a while, so I'm not sure if Jin Hao is actually moving towards the transparent knobs of the converters or if they are providing these only for the translucent pens because we don't even see the converters through the barrel of the other translucent pens. At least that's what I thought. But now that I have the sea foam and the gray where the converters are visible through the barrels, I think the choice of a transparent material for the knob of the converters might be deliberate. Will we be seeing actual transparent or demonstrator Jin Hao 82 fountain pens in the future? I don't know. I am probably overthinking this. But as for these two pens, I'm not sure about them. Well, I am sure now that I don't like the sea foam because of the transparency and the pro finish, but I am 50-50 with a gray one. Therefore, for this video, I am only going to ink the sapphire and the white. For the white, I really want to use the Robert Oster Sydney Lavender. I really like seeing purple or violet inks inside all white pens. And for the sapphire, I want to take the plunge and finally use this Noodler's Shaw's Rose that I have been considering using for a while. I was worried that it might stain, but this sapphire pen looks dark enough to take the risk. First, I dip the nib of the white pen in the Sydney Lavender ink just to make sure that there are no problems with the nib and it looks like the nib works just fine. And then I inked it up like normal and it looks very, very pretty. The pen already writes wet, which I prefer because wet pens show shading better as well as shimmer. Shading is when the ink dries darker in some parts and lighter in other parts. That is when the ink pools in some parts so the ink there dries darker. I think that is the prettiest characteristic of fountain pen writing and it's what I always look for. However, have you noticed that the ink initially looks lavender and then becomes bluish as it dries? The paper that I'm using, the the one with a graph on it is Elias paper. It came blank, but I printed the graph on it. It's what I use when making bound notebooks. And I do have a video on my channel comparing Elias paper with a Midori MD paper. I will link that video down below. But this is the first time that I am noticing the color change of any ink on Elias paper. When I wrote a swatch on that swatch card, which uses the Bavania Splendor Gel White Paper 270 GSM, the color does not change. It looks lavender when wet, and it looks the same lavender when it's dry. But on Elias paper, as you can see, it is lavender when it's wet, and it's a bluish lavender when it's dry. It's very, very strange. Anyway, I'll be testing out the ink with different papers later on in this video. For now, let us move on to the Shaw's Rose. I first also dipped the nib of the pen into the ink and wrote with that to check if the nib has any problems. And it looks like the nib is okay. And that's when I fill the pen like normal. Now, even after inking the pen through the converter, the lines that the pen lace down are not as vibrant as the color on the swatch card. That is if I write normally with a pen, but if I press down on the paper, the ink looks wetter and therefore looks darker, much closer to the color on the swatch card, and that is the kind of color that I prefer. Like I said, I prefer wet pens. And I can achieve that if I press down on the paper with the pen. However, the entire point of writing with fountain pens is so that we don't have to press down on the paper. Pressing down on the paper gives me wrist pain after maybe two minutes of writing, and it's just not a good way to write. So I'm going to make this pen write more wetly using a hack that my friend Mona taught me just recently. I cut out a small strip of acetate sheet 
and I'm going to insert this through the tines of the nib. You can also pull out the nib first before you do this, if you can, if you want to. And these nibs are just friction fit, you can pull them out. But for me, if I can get away with having one less step and have the same results, I go for having one less step. It is also okay to do this with a pen that is already inked. You are just going to get some ink on your fingers, but I never really minded that. It is very, very fiddly. But to insert the piece of acetate into the tines of the nib, you first have to press down on one of the tines gently, but you essentially make the tines disaligned for a moment. And then when the tines are disaligned, you push the acetate through the tines, and then that is when you must align the tines again. And you can see both of the tines through the acetate. Because the acetate is clear, you can see if the tines are aligned. And after you have done that, you can just leave the pen for about three minutes. Just leave it alone. You can also use a brass shim instead of acetate. People actually used to use this with brass shim, but I don't have that. But I do have acetate and it works just fine. The acetate does not hurt the nib at all. Just really make sure that you align the tines immediately after pushing in the acetate. While waiting, in the meantime, let me just do more tests of the Sydney Lavender, which starts out truly lavender on the Elias paper, but turns a bluish lavender after it dries. I have here a pad of the Midori MD paper, and this is the cream version. I'm just going to cut off a strip of it for the pen test so that I can use the rest of the sheet for something else. And as you can see, the ink looks lavender when wet, and then after several seconds, when it has already dried, the color did not change at all on the Midori MD paper. It is the same lavender as the lavender on the swatch card that uses the Bavania Splendor Gel cardstock. Now let us try a sheet of the 40 GSM onion skin paper. The brand of the paper is Mica. I keep sheets of them in the journal section of my disc bound life notebook. And I also have two videos of this notebook, which I will link down below. And I also have two videos of this particular onion skin paper. And I will also link both of them in this description box. As you can see, the ink starts out as lavender on the onion skin, and after it dries, it still looks the same lavender color that we started out with. Here are all of the writing samples on different papers together in the same frame. The Midori MD paper shows lavender. The ink swatch card shows lavender both on the swab and the handwriting sample. And the onion skin shows lavender. But the Elias paper shows a bluish lavender. Now that is very interesting. However, inks do that sometimes. Paper does that sometimes. And even the kind of nib that you use is a factor on how the final handwriting looks on paper. I don't really mind. It's just another quirk of fountain pen writing that I choose to enjoy, but it's something you might want to be aware of. Now at this point, the three minutes are up for the nib of the sapphire pen, and as you can see, it writes so much more wetly. It looks just wonderful. Just look at the difference of the before and the after. It is already so beautiful, but I wanted to try to make it even more wet. You can do the acetate technique more than once, actually. Just don't overdo it because if the tines are too far apart, then the pen is not going to write at all. So if you want a super wet pen, just do the acetate technique in increments, not all in a single go. And after another three minute wait, it writes even more wetly and this is my goal. As you can see, it is super, super wet, so the color shows up so much better, and the color is so beautiful. The color of this ink does not change on Elias paper, by the way. It looks the same dry as it looks while still wet on the Elias paper, unlike the Sydney Lavender that we tested out earlier. 
So I highly recommend that you try out this acetate sheet hack. I think this is so cool and extremely helpful if you prefer making juicy lines like I do. And juicy writing is not automatically achieved by a bigger nib either. Some broad nibs can still write dry sometimes. It is not the nib size, it is the ink flow. More ink flow will result in wetter lines, even if the lines are fine or extra fine. Okay, so the final step would be to log these new pens and inks combinations in my tracking sheet for pens and inks in use that I keep in the journal section of my life notebook. I did talk about these tracking sheets in my video about my return to journaling, which I will link down below. Now, I used the Diamine Damson, which is a dusky purple ink, and it used to be in a Pilot Metropolitan pen, but I have already cleaned out that pen and listed it for sale, which is why there is a gray bar down the side of this specific box to signify that the combination of pen and ink no longer exists, so I can just ignore that when figuring out what pen to use for anything. The paper that I'm using for these tracking sheets is the Bavania Splendor Gel White in 160 GSM. I think it is more or less the same paper that's in my ink swatch cards, but that one is 270 GSM. Because in my experience and observation, the inks behave the same on the 160 GSM and the 260 GSM. So the Sydney Lavender ink definitely is not going to turn blue on this paper. And if you're still watching at this point, thank you so much for staying and I hope you can consider subscribing if you haven't done that yet. And that is my little video for you today. I hope this video was helpful for you in figuring out which of the translucent colors to purchase. And I hope the acetate sheet technique that I demonstrated here is also something that will be helpful to you. Thanks to Mona for teaching me that. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.